question? see all can you hear me raise your hand if you can hear me okay very good so uh, as you might imagine being that we're outside and all these things things are gonna be a little different than normal so first off you'll notice the plates for the offering are in the back so uh, just when when you feel so moved or especially at the end please uh, bring that Oh, sorry, they're not all the way back. They're, they're sort of in the center there. So uh, as, as you're heading out, if you have a chance, please uh, drop off your offerings in the offering plates there. Um, additionally, uh, Holy Communion is going to be working a little bit differently today. So we have a really amazing thing going on. We have three, count them, three first communions. So we will be celebrating first communion with grace, Vienna and Julian and their so their parents and siblings will be coming forward with them to receive Holy Communion first so they will be receiving first and then at that point uh, myself and Judy will be bringing communion out to you all so so that way we won't have a whole sort of flurry of people um, you know wandering into each other's airspace and so on so to speak um, so so yeah be just remain seated and, and Holy Communion will come to you additionally you might notice I think it's actually in the back this time not actually there there is a blue um, bucket to place, a uh, bin to place your food items for those of you that for your Lenten discipline, you were gathering food for those that receive food from the Hunter North Hunterton uh, Food Pantry. Uh, additionally, if you ordered Easter flowers, oh, they're up there, they are beautiful, this is a wonderful thing, and afterwards, if you could take yours, that would also be a wonderful thing. So uh, additionally, you'll find in your bulletin, there is a let us know you're here card. So if you have a chance, please fill that out. And um, we'll be using that both to keep in touch, but also for contract tracing, if that is something that, an eventuality that we need to, to use. Additionally, sorry, a lot of announcements because we haven't all been together in a while. So, uh, updated directories will be available after worship, so please um, receive them on your way out as well. And then finally, thank you for, to everyone who made this happen. This has been a huge endeavor. It's uh, been no small feat, and not only this service itself, but all of Holy Week. We've been, you know, Holy Week is a hard, stressful time in and of itself, um, and in a totally different environment, it's even more tricky. So I am so glad that we were, we had so many people that were willing and able to, uh, to do what needed to be done to make sure that the service and all these services went well. A special thank you to our soloist, Laura Mortensen. She will be singing on our behalf today. So we ourselves will not be singing, but she will be our voice. So that is, a, a thing that we can give thanks for as well. Uh, one final thing, as we are heading out today, we are going to be able to participate in 
not in singing, but in percussion, right? So that's one of the things that we can do still. So we are able to clap our hands. So we will be singing, the Aussie family will be singing, this is the day as we head out from worship. So as they clap, so too will we. Amen? Amen. Uh, please rise first as we'll begin with a brief litany of God's acts. So this is the description of the various salvation acts that we, we, we see as in anticipating the resurrection. So with that, alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the beginning, before the beginning, there was only chaos and emptiness, no light, literally no ground to stand upon, alone and without life. But God created all that is, seen and unseen, and has declared it good, light, a firm foundation, life. At the river's edge, Pharaoh's chariots hounded us. We were penned in, there was no escape. The seas have parted. We find ourselves safe on the other side. We are freed. We are sore, working mightily for no pay. Away in a strange land, where can we turn? O oh, tired ones, eat what is good, Delight in the richness on offer, turn to the Lord. It is claustrophobic. It is loud. The heat of the fiery furnace raises our blood pressure and adrenaline. Find comfort. The Lord is with us, in the furnace with us, so that we will come out unharmed. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you deliver us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a, a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, 
I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you, have been, you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so we have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen, linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, she stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, 
If you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means my teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brother and say to them, my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated for the, the hymn of the day. So at this point, uh, we're going to be, I'm do it from here, I guess. So uh, the young and the young at heart, I'd ask you to go through your bulletin and find this yellow sheet here. Now we're, we're doing uh, our, our uh, children's message here. So the way I normally start it is I say, God loves you and everybody else responds, God loves you too. So let's try that. God loves you. God loves you too. Now if you look at this, this sheet here, there, there's this kind of ink blot looking thing. Now the nifty thing, and it's easier for some people's eyes than others, but what you can do is you can look at those three center dots for about 30 seconds. And then, so we're going to kind of do that while I talk, and then once that has happened, you're going to close your eyes and look up at the ceiling. And what should happen is one of those kind of traditional pictures of Jesus will, will show up uh, sort of in relief. So I think I've been maybe talking for about 30 seconds. So let's try that. Close your eyes and look up. So who saw it? If you, if you saw it, raise your hand. Okay, so some... So for some folk, that was, that was a pretty, pretty easy thing. For others, it didn't, didn't quite come out quite as well. It was hard to see Jesus. And I, I just want that to be a metaphor for us to think about a little bit, a way to think about what's happening with Mary and what's happening with, with these disciples as, as they meet Jesus in a wide variety of ways. In fact, we have 40, 50 days where we're going to be celebrating the disciples meeting Jesus in a variety of ways. Because the cool thing is, Easter isn't one day, but a whole season. So, I want you to think for a moment about this, about, 
about the ways that we see Jesus, but also the ways that sometimes it's hard to see Jesus, and that both of those are fair things. There's going to be times in our lives where it's super easy to see Jesus. You just need your 30-second stare and look up, and bam, you're there. Other times, it's going to look a little bit like a, an ink blot chart or something. Sometimes it's not going to be as easy to see as we would like. And here's the good thing. Whether it's easy or it's hard to see, whether it was one of the, you were one of the people that raised your hand right away because you saw it, or you're going to have to do that a couple more times to, to try to see it. Either way, know this. He is risen. Mary has seen the Lord and she's able to tell us this good news. And it's good news for you no matter what you see at this time. Because He is risen. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the many and myriad of ways that we are able to see your Son, Jesus. Lord, may he be made plain for all of us, and especially the, the young folk here today who, who get to look at this, this, and especially those who get to experience you in bread and wine. In the name of our risen Lord, amen. So I'm going to have to do a little gymnastics here for half a moment, but then we're going to get to our regular sermon. So with that, grace, peace, and mercy to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. Now Mary, she got there while it was still dark out. Perhaps she in fact picked through the tombs. You know, she whacked her, her shin as she's going forward towards the one tomb that matters to her. Perhaps the first rays of sun highlighted the stone that had been rolled away. The first sign, interestingly enough, that something was wrong. Grave robbers, her first thought. A double trauma now for her. She'd watched it. She'd watched his execution. And now this, they took him. They took her Lord. She'd come alone, according to John's Gospel. So she sought the comfort and the protection of fellow followers of Jesus. She, she finds the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, there are hints that this is maybe Lazarus or maybe John himself. What, whoever it is, he who was there with her, he was there with Mary, there at the cross, at the end. Now, he's there with her for the, to share this double trauma, execution, and then they took him. She also goes as well to the disciple who denied Jesus, Peter. And there's this strained relationship between the beloved disciple and Peter. This competition that develops between them runs out ahead of Mary, right? You get to actually see it right there in the flesh, these two disciples. A race highlighting their division. Their strange foot race. They're peering into the tomb like school children daring each other on to do something that's scary and unknown, right? The beloved disciple wins the race. He gets there first. But then Peter goes the extra mile and looks inside into the tomb. And the beloved disciple believed and yet neither of them understand. And, and here's kind of the tragedy of it, the, the, the scandal of it. If you notice, both leave Mary alone, right? They run on ahead. And she's again left. She was looking for comfort. And they ran on ahead of her. Mary's alone. And then alone, 
she arrives at the tomb as well because they've, they've finished their race and they've headed back to wherever they were before that. Then all of a sudden it becomes a triple indignity, a triple trauma for Mary. Crucifixion, they took him and now they left her. Those two friends left her alone. Alone with her tears, so soggy her eyes, so sorrowful her heart that she can't see the angels or see her Lord. She's only concerned with the body. Where is it? All she can see is that it's up to her because she's alone. She'll carry that impossible weight of his body. She'll carry it by herself if she has to. And she weeps. She weeps because that ancient Canaanite myth that Isaiah references there back in Isaiah 25. He references this Canaanite myth of Mot, death. Death is in fact the eater of worlds, a cosmic crocodile kind of floating up there somewhere in the sky that is eventually going to consume each of us, yes, all of us, yes, but ultimately consume the whole world. And she is face to face there with the fact that death even consumed her Lord. The shroud of death has dulled all their eyes. The shroud of death has chased the disciples each to their own little corners. Each one alone like Mary, alone even in the presence of angels and their dear Lord. Each disciple diminished, defensive, and disagreeable. Like coals separated out from a fire, right? They, they, they glow together, but when you knock one to one side, one to another, another still to another place, eventually the fire goes out. That veil, that shroud, death, still covers us as well. We've all lost something. We've all lost someone. We've all lost to that many-toothed beast, death. We've felt its veil over our eyes, so heavy we do not notice when we entertain angels unaware. So oppressive that we crouch each in our own corners, each alone and alienated from other fellow disciples. And on its account, the fire goes out. And yet, that veil, that shroud, we don't simply pluck that myth out of thin air and put it into scripture and then leave it there. Isaiah does something with it. That shroud we are promised by Isaiah shall be taken up and it shall be transformed. It'll be transformed into a tablecloth, right? I mean, this is a really amazing way he takes this, this myth that's sitting on everybody mind and everybody's heart, this thing that everybody knew just sort of floated in the air about how we understand death. And it's transformed into a tablecloth, a picnic blanket laid on green grass, a meal of life laid out in full, a feast. Death, that consumer of all, shall become at this picnic the main course. The eater shall be eaten, the consumer consumed. Isn't that Easter? Grace, Vienna, Julian. That promise, right, that promise is part of the meal you will partake in, the meal you will receive today. Holy Communion is a foretaste, a preview of that promise. It's a promise and a presence of God so real 
that we can taste it, right? I and mean, that's the wonderful thing about sacraments is they're not simply words, but they're words with a thing attached that you can feel and experience and know it is true for you because it's going down your gullet. It is in you. Salvation itself on offer, every tear wiped away. Every tear. Every tear, Mary. Mary, right? He says her name, Mary. He calls her by name like a sweet christening, as if it was a, a name, as if she was being named and claimed at baptism. And she knew. She knew she was named and she knew and she knew him there finally. She saw what before her eyes had not seen and her heart could not hold. Crucifixion was not an end. The tomb was empty on account of resurrection. Mary wasn't alone, nor was she abandoned. Instead, she was a messenger. A messenger that will rekindle that fire, those various pieces that are going out, right? They're brought back together. The coals are gathered so that they can recreate the community of Christ Jesus with these disciples hearing the good news from her. She is commanded to tell of his ascension, tell them all the relationship that Jesus has with them all is the same relationship that Jesus has with God, right? And that's the ultimate salvation in John's gospel. That that relationship and the other relationship are now one. It's as if you had a, a Venn diagram and you had creator here and creation over here and right there in the center is Jesus connecting the two. You are and shall always be a child of God, Jesus tells her. Your siblings, those disciples, they too now must know. Know of the relationship between us. Your message is atonement, right? Let's, let's stop on that word once, atonement. At one meant. Literally a word that the English had to invent when they translated the King James Bible. Because how do you describe what this means? How do you describe what Mary's message is to these disciples and to all of us as well? What Mary's message was was nothing short of at one meant. Tell the disciples all this, and yet, you know, when, when what we actually get of Mary's message is so very short. She simply, simply tells them what she can. I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And that is enough, right? It's always the way with our witness, the way that we tell people about the gospel. The way in which we point to Jesus is always a little rugged. Always trying, always incomplete, always catching up to the fullness of God found in Jesus Christ. But still, she says it, I have seen the Lord. And still we all can say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we can say too, of course, the... The, the creed, the, the, the message, the story of the gospel as we have written in the Nicene Creed. So if you don't, please rise as able. So if the story that I told you there, the story Mary told didn't quite get us there, we always have more. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive is the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. We pray especially for Sammy, Daniel, Joshua, Marshall, Nicholas, Cooper, Justin, and Devin. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve, especially Lance, Irwin, Bill, Setsuko, Bonnie, Walter, Robert, Julia, Dave, Clarence, Beth, Sarah, Rich. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with Benedict, Benedict the African and all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now, as we prepare for this Thanksgiving meal, let us take a moment to consider what, since last we received Holy Communion, we are thankful for. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all of the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all of their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and we join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, blessed it, and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and said, This cup is the cov new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And this time I'd ask the, the first communicants as well as their immediate family to come forward for, to receive Holy Communion. the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Does he receive? Okay. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. Take meat. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you all of your days. Please, please be seated. The 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. So please do raise your hand so I know who, who is wishing to receive Holy Communion, just so I'm not missing any. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Jesus, son. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. Body and blood of Christ, given for you. Amen.
please rise for the blessing? May the glorious God grant your spe you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.